Okay, welcome back. So in this section, we're going to take a look at one of the more uh, important uh, screens that you're going to be in within Studio One. And again, I'm showing you in this course really the basics. Uh, we're not going to go through every detail of every single facet of Studio One, but this is one of the screens that's important. So let's go over to the Preferences window. So if you're on a Mac, you're going to come to the Studio One menu here at the top left-hand side, and you're going to click on Preferences. If you're running this on a PC, it's slightly different. I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, along the top, you are going to have something that says options with the preference window okay and i think it's going to be over here on the ref on the right hand side but for a mac you're going to come over to preferences and whether you're on a mac or pc this window looks the same so let's talk about the preferences window which is where you're going to do most of your configuration and 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 your when, when you're setting up studio one now we've already talked about the, uh, the, the device, the audio device configuration in a few earlier samples. We talked about the device block size, the sample rate. We talked about all of this, which is in the audio setup tab. But we have some more tabs here across the top. So let's just briefly go through them. So the general tab here, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to have a couple of things you can do. So when Studio One starts, you can do nothing. You can open up the last song or project you worked on if you want to do that. You could create a new song or you can or you can open a default song or project. Okay, so you could set that up. We're going to do nothing, but just know that that's there. You could check for updates or not check for updates. You probably want to leave that checked. Okay, you could change the language down here. Now, the appearance section here is where you're going to be able to change the look of Studio One. Um, the default is what we've been looking at up to this point, that color scheme. But there's a bunch of different things that you can do. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I, I know this is a recording course. But you could come through and you can change the way the background looks. You could change the hue, the saturation, the luminous, um, and such. You can load some presets that they've already created if you want to uh, change the preset, which will change the overall look of the user interface. Okay. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Again, there's keyboard shortcuts already set up for Studio One in here. However, let's say you were coming through or coming from a different DAW. You can always come down here to where it says keyboard mapping scheme and you can go ahead and you can choose Cubase if you came from Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, or Cakewalk. And what that's going to do, it's going to map all of the uh, keyboard shortcuts for that DAW. So that's super helpful. So let's say you're coming over from Pro Tools or Cubase and you've already got a lot of your keyboard shortcuts memorized. You don't have to relearn all the shortcuts the Studio One way. You can just go ahead and you can change it under the keyboard mapping scheme. Okay, next tab is our network. Allow remote control apps to discover the DAW. You want to say yes to that, especially down the road if you want to get yourself a fader port or some kind of a surface control, which we'll talk about in later sections. But for now, just leave it at its default. <clears throat> okay, touch input. Again, just leave everything at its default for now. For this recording course, you don't need to worry. So that's the general uh, tab. Over in locations, um, we have a few different tabs here. Um, the first one is under user data, user data location, your songs, your projects, and your presets. It can You can have a default area that you can um, set those up in. So remember we talked about in the last section if you're going to use an external drive, um, every t or if you're not going to use an external drive, if you have a specific directory you set up on your internal hard drive where you want Studio One to always place your songs and your projects when you create new songs, you can add, you can tell it that right here. So if you wanted to put it, for example, on your desktop always, I can click this and I could go to my desktop. And now every time it's always going to put it on the desktop. Okay, so that'll save you a few clicks in the future, but just know that it's there. This is a hugely important feature I want you to pay attention to. This auto save documents, it's auto checked and it's defaulted at two minutes. Now, some older versions of Studio One, Studio One 3 and back, this was unchecked as a default and you had to check this. I believe in Studio One 4, it looks like it's automatically there. But if yours is unchecked, I highly recommend that you check auto save documents and two minutes is the default, but you can change that to whatever you want. I leave it at two minutes. Regardless of the DAW that you're using, and I will tell you from someone in the industry who has worked with every single DAW that's out there, Studio One has always been the most stable as far as crashes and such. Most times when, when a DAW crashes, it really doesn't have anything to do with the program, but it's usually around your computer. Studio One does a really good job with all the different computer figurations that are out there to be as stable as possible. However, things happen from time to time, 
And if your dog crashes for some reason, you want to make sure you haven't lost a whole bunch of work that you might have been working on. So autosave is super important. This next box is also hugely important. And I see that it's checked by default. But again, in past versions, this was not checked by default. And I would always tell my students to go in and check this as well. Ask to copy external files when saving song. What this means is, again, like we talked about in the last section, let's say you have a bunch of audio files that a friend or a colleague is sending to you so you could bring them into Studio One and mix their project or record additional tracks to their project. When you bring those files into your song, unless this box is checked, when you save that session for the first time, it won't copy the audio files into that audio folder that we talked about in the last section go back and review that if you haven't watched this series in order i hope you have um, but with this box checked it is going to take those files that you imported it's going to copy them to that audio directory that folder so then you can delete the original files and throw them away and you'll always have a copy in your session hugely important so make sure that these two boxes are checked just like you see on the screen in front of you here okay that's what that means Okay, <clears throat> now over to the next file. We have file types here again. This is something you can just leave alone. It's all the different file types that Studio One recognizes it can work with. For this, for this series, we don't need to worry about that. Sound sets. Now this is something else where when you download your additional content with Studio One, all your loops and your files and all your VST instruments, they're going to put them in a specific location. By default, this is where it's put. But let's say again, as you purchase more loops, if you decide to purchase more loops from PreSonus or more VST software instruments down the road, and you want to put those on a different drive from your internal drive, hard drive, remember we talked about the, the file sizes and hard drive space, you may, want to, you may want to navigate to a different area and put it in a different drive if that's what you choose to do. Recognize that for now, it's always going to put it in this location that it's installed to, but you can change that. And that's a good idea, especially if you're someone who works with lots of MIDI files down the road, someone that's going to work with lots of loops, and those things take up a ton of hard drive space. So just like you're going to have your Studio One session file that we talked about in the last section, possibly on an external drive, you may also want to consider putting all your loops and stuff on an external drive as well. Um, but you can change that here. So that's where you do that here. Okay, that's all your sound set. All your instrument libraries, again, any VST software instruments, PreSonus gives you a handful with artists, and we'll look at those in later sections. But let's say down the road you purchase some other plugins and other third-party VST software instruments, you can choose where that's going to be stored as well. So that's the locations tab. We've already talked about the audio setup. External devices, for now we don't have any external devices. This UCNet remote comes default with PreSonus. Don't worry about that. Later on, and in, in, in part maybe towards the end of this series, you're going to see a section where I talk about some peripherals that you can hook up to Studio One if you choose to, to help you get away from the mouse and the keyboard as far as recording and mixing and using some surface control uh, items like the fader port. Also, when we record our keyboard track later on in this series, we're going to hook up a little MIDI controller. That's all going to be done under external devices, and we'll do that at that time. So just realize that any kind of MIDI controller or surface control product that you may purchase down the road will all be configured under external devices. And again, we'll do that later on, okay? And then advanced here. The advanced area you can kind of work through. For this series, you don't really need to worry about it. I would just leave a lot of this stuff at its default. You really don't need to change anything. It gives you some options on how Studio One really behaves. And until you come real familiar with Studio One, you may just want to leave this at its default. But you can go through these items and you can decide what you want to have Studio One do or not do based on your workflow. But for now, a lot of these things just leave. I would just leave them alone for now don't touch them and when you go under the services tab you'll see you'll get a warning uh, changing these advanced settings might lead to improper function of studio one you should only continue continue if you are sure you what you are doing and then you can go say okay i'll be careful <clears throat> or i would just get out of there and i would just get out of there so that is the preferences window uh here on how we're going to do that now the last thing we're going to do um to go back to our audio setup tab we're going to say, uh, well, let's cancel this. Do we want to change any of the settings? Let's just say OK. And I want to go back into that preferences window again. I'm going to go back to the audio setup. So again, we have our playback device and our recording device here, the AudioBox 96, the AudioBox USB 96. 
Down here in the bottom, we're going to go to Song Setup. Okay, I want to show you how to set up our inputs and our outputs. When we go to Song Setup, there are three tabs. The General tab, which talks about the sample rate, the resolution. All these items here were the same items that we talked about when we created our song on the New Song dialog box. That's where all these settings came from, and you can go back in and you can change them. So what this means is... When you created our new song and we put in all this information, if we decided later on that, you know what, I don't want it to be a 48K, I want it to be a 41K, you can change it. So even if you don't get it exactly right when you create the new song file, you have an opportunity to come in and to change those details here. Okay, uh, more information. This will just give you information that you could put in about the song, the artist. You can put some comments. You can put some artwork here. If you have like a CD or an album artwork you want to use or an artist picture, you could do that as well. Um, and all that stuff will be is there. But the tab that I really want to talk about is the audio setup tab, the audio IO, the inputs and the output setup tab. This is important. So because we are, they, uh, Studio One knows that our, our interface is an audio box, USB 96, it shows us our inputs and our outputs. And let me just show you. So over here we have our input tab and we have our output tab. Let's start with the output. So the outputs are actually just the only two outputs that are on the back of the audio box are the two quarter inch jacks that are going to your speakers if you have speakers. Um, if you don't have any speakers, you don't need to worry about that. It, that audio will also go out the headphone jack and go into your headphones if you're using that. So here's the two outputs, outputs left and right, okay? Output left is channel one, out, or number one. Number two is output right. That's gonna be defaulted, you wanna leave that, okay? On our input side, we have two inputs on the front of the audio box uh, 96 USB. Inputs one, input two, okay? Now for our purposes, what they do here is they created a, a stereo input, a left-right stereo input, and then they created two mono inputs, which we really don't need. We're only going to record one instrument at a time here. So what you can do is you can go here and you can highlight the first one and hit remove. And then we're going to highlight the second one. We're going to hit remove. And the third one we're going to hit remove. And I'm going to show you how to create an input. So we have two inputs available to us. If you have an interface that has more inputs, let's say uh, a Studio 192 by PreSonus, that has eight inputs. There would be eight inputs across the top here. But for this series, it's uh, the audio box USB 96 only has two inputs. We're going to record pretty much by ourselves throughout this whole series. We're going to record one instrument at a time. So we only need one mono input. So we're going to add a mono input. And here's the first one here by clicking that button. It says input one. And you can see it defaults to channel one. If you wanted to plug into the second input on the front of the audio box USB, you just click on the second one. It'll move it. Okay. We're going to keep it on the first one. You can also double click in there and call it whatever you want. So let's say it's going to be your guitar track. You could call it guitar or you can call it kick drum, whatever you want to call it. We're going to leave it in input one. If we wanted to also use input two at the same time, let's say we were recording an acoustic guitar and singing at the same time. Let's say that was something we were doing. We can create a second mono input by clicking add mono. And now it defaults to channel two. And now you could, in theory, plug your guitar in on channel one and your vocal mic in on channel two. Okay, you want to make sure that for every song, depending on what you're going to do, you want to make sure your inputs are set up correctly. So again, for what we're doing, we're only going to need one input. We're going to use input one, and I'm going to remove input two. So you can add mono tracks, you can add stereo tracks, and then once you have it set up, if you wanted to make this your default, you can click on this default button. So what that means is every time you create a song file, with the audio box USB 96 as your interface, it'll automatically keep your inputs and your outputs set up the same way, which is something I do in my own personal studio because typically it's always the same. So I can just hit and click on default and it says, are you sure you want to do that for your new songs? And let's just click yes. And the next time we click, we uh, create a song, it'll be there. Once you've done all your changes here, you want to just click on the apply button down here in the bottom right hand corner and then hit OK. And now our I.O. is set up. So we've gone through the preferences window. I showed you all the different things that you need to make sure you keep checked and unchecked. And we made sure our I.O., our inputs and outputs on our uh, audio box USB is all set up correctly. So if you come back for the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to start to walk through this screen. I'm going to show you the browser, the console. The next section is going to have several different parts to it. I want to get you familiar with the, uh, with the screen in front of us here so we can start uh, getting familiar with how things work and flow so we can start recording our songs. So come on back for the next section.